What's going on, everybody? Eric Barassa here, and it's been a hot minute. Today, we're going to talk about Angels and Airwaves track Automatic. They didn't release this one as a single, but as I was listening to the album Life Forms, I was like, man, this song has some cool guitar parts, and it has a guitar solo that's actually really interesting to listen to and fun to play, and I had a good time figuring it out, so I thought I would share it with everybody else. Be sure and like and subscribe if you like this video, and uh, also just a quick update. Yeah, healing up nicely from my, uh, my carpal tunnel surgery, so I'm back in action now, and let's start with the intro. Okay, so the intro is gonna be played on the fifth string on your A string. We're gonna start at the fourth fret C sharp, and then go to open A, and then to the second fret B. Okay, so it's just open two and four on the A strings. So we got four, 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 O, oh, two, four, two, O. Oh. And then we go to the open D string. Uh, and you're gonna hit that three times. D, 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 and then we go back to the fifth string. Two, four, O. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay, so we got uh, four, 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 O, oh, two, four, two, O, oh, O, oh, O, oh, O, oh, four, two, four, O. Oh. Okay, so that's basically what's happening there. Uh, except it sounds like w instead of just playing regular D on the second half, almost like you're playing that C sharp bent up to a D on the second half. So let's try it like that. So you can kind of experiment with whether you want just the open D or whether you want the uh, the, the C sharp in there too. So O, 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 two, four, O, right? So fourth string to the fifth string or just crazy four. Okay. Okay. Now the acoustic guitar is is uh, for the intro and the verse. I think it's the same thing. It's basically this A five. So we've got open A uh, on the fifth string, and then we've got second fret on the fourth string and second fret on the third string, and then into um, we lift off the third finger and we play the index finger on fret one of the third string. So we've got. Kind of like that. And then we go to a D5, which is a, like a D chord, but without the first string. And we're gonna use that um, finger two from, that was normally on the first string. And we're going to lift the ring finger and grab the second fret on the second string to create like a D major seven, so. And I would block the first string with your middle finger, um, but you can leave it open. You can experiment with leaving extra open strings for both of these chords. Uh, so we've got A5 to like a version of A major seven, and then D5 to a version of D major seven. Okay, that's, that's the... the um, That, that's what it sounds like is happening to me on the verse uh, as well as in the intro. You can also play it like this with power chords. It doesn't have quite the same chimey feel to it, but it definitely works. And so we've got an A5 power chord at the fifth fret of string six. And then you just lift off your pinky to grab fret six. And then we go to the next string, we do the same thing. So those are cool chords to play with, and that's the one and the four chord in the key of A major. Um, so going from uh, a one chord to a one major seven and a four chord to a four major seven totally fits in a regular major scale for the key of A. So hey, that's fun. Okay, at the end of the verse, we just sit on that D5 chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do. Sorry, I can't sing it, but... Uh, you're just doing an extra measure or two of that D5 chord. So in the verse, we've basically got four times through the chord progression and then one extra time staying on that D5. Okay, so now when we get into the chorus, um, I can't tell if just the bass is going down to G, to G sharp or not, but it, especially if you're playing this by yourself, I would do this. I would play...
That's what I would be playing if I was the only guitar player playing in uh, in a band uh, with this. So you've got A5, and I'm just doing the two finger version of A5 here, and that makes it easy to do what I call the Tom DeLonge chord, where you just drop the index finger down a fret. So we've got A5, index drops down a fret to four, and then we've got this cool little riff in the chorus. So we've got second fret on the fourth string, open, and then we move to the fifth string, fourth fret, and then open fourth string, and then open fifth string. E, D, C sharp, D, A. Okay, um, and then the background rhythm guitar is playing a D5 chord, um, just like in the intro and the verse. So you could do this. Uh, here's kind of a hybrid thing, but you have to move that lead part up an octave. So we've got, we're just adding those notes to the D5 chord, right? Because if you're just playing rhythm guitar, that's the harmony of what's being played. Um, but if you want to get that D5 harmony plus the riff, right? I definitely prefer the way it sounds down there, but if you want to get both at the same time, then that's why we would. Play it that way, okay? So you can you can experiment with that and, and sort of just see what, what you think. Um, I think when, when you've got these really well-produced songs where they can layer upon layer of, of doing all sorts of crazy things, um, you have to kind of adapt it for how you want to play it when you're by yourself at home and how you would want to play it in a live setting versus if you were recording uh, a full version of, of this song. So just some, some things to think about with that. Okay, now in verse two, uh, or sorry, we go back to the... <clears throat> We go back to the intro after playing through the chorus twice, and then we're in verse two. In verse two, everything stays the same, but there's an extra lead guitar that's happening over top, and it's something kind of like this. Um, to me, that's it's basically that's what it's doing each time with slight variations. So you can just experiment with playing on the third string, second fret, to the first fret, to the fourth fret, and then slide up to six and back to four, and then resolve to two. So if you were to play that kind of with the chords. That's kind of what it sounds like if you were to put both of those parts together. So it's a cool little little thing um, that you can add if, if you want. So now, uh, after our second verse, which is exactly like the first, plus that extra little D5 at the end, we go into our second chorus. The second chorus is going to be twice as long, and there's going to be something different the third time. We're going to add an F sharp and an E power chord in between, uh, kind of like this. So first two times, we'll be... Third time, F sharp, power chord, E5, power chord. Then back, A. Okay, so that F sharp power chord is at the second fret of string six. You can do a two finger power chord or a three finger power chord. I go back and forth, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then you go to an E5 power chord, open two and two. Okay, so we've got regular pattern the first two times, and then the third time through we do the F sharp, E, D, or do the riff instead of the, the D, and then back to um, the original chorus for the fourth time. Okay, so now we get into the guitar solo. This guitar solo is so much fun. Uh, I really enjoyed learning it. So we're gonna kind of do this.
Okay, so we've got the second fret on the third string. And then we do these little puny bends at the first fret. It, they're very quick, just up and back. And um, they can be half step bends, meaning you're bending all the way up to make it sound like the second fret. Um, but that's kind of tough to do on the first fret. So you could also just do quarter step bends and it still actually sounds really good. And uh, I'm not totally sure which they're doing. It's kind of, sounds like it could kind of be either. Yeah, so just bend it far enough to make to kind of get that sound. And then we go to open on the second string and then second fret on the second string. Now we're gonna do a pre-bend. So bend that second fret up until it sounds like the third fret and pluck it at its peak and release. Okay, so then uh, all together so far we've got. And then we're gonna go, second time through is the same, but then we drop down to fourth fret on the fourth string, second fret on the fourth string. Okay, so that's the first half of the chorus. Let me put all that together. And then the end of that first half goes like this. We're gonna go on the second string, seven, nine, 10. Okay, in the second half of the solo, we're gonna add the high E open for some chime, extra chiminess, which sounds really nice. And we're gonna do this. So play around with those frets and listen to the song. Listen with with your ear for that. Well, I, and rather than listening with your nose, I guess I don't know why I said that. <laughs> so we've got ten, nine, and ten, and then up to twelve, and then slide up to fourteen, and we'll go back and forth from fourteen to fifteen. So you can sort of play with this idea and this idea, and then we're back. So I'm kind of playing it like, uh, like this. If I go from the end of the first part, and then we're gonna go, this is cool. Um, seven, nine, five, seven, three, two. Okay, so here that is again. That's kind of the trickiest part of the whole solo, I, I feel. And then, um, and again, we're, we're still adding, we're playing the first two strings together the whole time on that second half of the solo. Um, and it's open, open E, right? Uh, and then we go O to O, resolve to A at the second fret on the third string. Okay, so one more time, here's that second half of the solo. Okay, cool. So then at the uh, end of the solo, we, we do this little walk down. If you're playing the lead part, then I would play it there. So on the second string, you got two, uh, three, two, O, oh, and then to the second fret on the third string, to the back to the third fret on the second string. And then we just go three, two, five on the second string. Um, if you've got two guitars, then you can drop down an octave and somebody else can can just be playing it. Um, open fourth string, and then on the fifth string, we got four, two, zero, and then zero on the fourth string. And then open on the fourth string again, down to the fourth fret on the fifth string, and then second fret on the fourth string. So all together, Okay, and then we do another chorus, which is just like the second chorus. And then we're actually back to the intro uh, for four times. And the last time th through the intro, we go four times. The first two times is exactly like the beginning of the song. The last two times through, you do uh, the lead riff the same. Right? 
Um, but the rhythm guitars and the bass are gonna do the F sharp, E, D power chords twice. And then you just hit on A. Oh, and there's one other extra chord uh, it, it, just at the in the intro and in the verses, um, an extra guitar, nice and chimey, that just is like doing an A chord. Okay, so that's just going on in the background. Last thing, don't forget on um, most of your guitars to add chorus and delay and maybe even a little bit of reverb. That's, that's pretty important to kind of emulating the sound that they're getting. Uh, don't do it on the acoustic guitar, and you, you don't, I probably wouldn't do it on like the heavy rhythm guitars, uh, but any single note lines for sure, and definitely on that solo, uh, especially, you want to make sure and add those effects. Okay guys, so that's it. That's Automatic by Angels and Airwaves. What do you think of the song? It's one of my favorite songs on the album. What do you think of the album overall? I really, really like it. Uh, it would have been cool to honestly have not heard any of these songs and just listen to the whole album uh, because it's so varied and diverse, but in a good way while still staying within their genre. You've got like this shoegaze, dream wave pop synthesizers and stuff, and then you've got um, just some uh, like pop punk type stuff. And um, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of runs the spectrum, but sort of still staying in their p parameters um, without getting too crazy. So it's got just enough uh, diversity there for me within the, the songs. And I think it's one of Tom DeLonge's best efforts, one of the best albums he's been a part of. Uh, so yeah, let me know what, what you guys think. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I filmed this with my uh, my iPhone because my other camera is kind of freaking out. So we'll see how this how this turns out. And as my great aunt Mildred always says, a pick is worth a thousand notes. <laughs>